limit as x approaches infinity of square root of x squared plus 2x all minus x. Okay, so the trick here, the, the we want to make a direct substitution right away, right? We want to put in infinity for x, but something weird happens, right? You get you get this term dominating here, so it seems to get infinitely large, but then you're taking the square root, which is somewhat neutralizing that, right? And then you're subtracting an infinitely large number from that infinitely large number, so it's actually quite hard to determine with a substitution method if this thing is going to approach a number or if it's going to be infinite or if it's going to be zero. So we need some tactics or some techniques for algebraically rearranging this before we go and let x approach infinity. So how can we rearrange this? Well, one thing to notice is that we don't really like dealing with square roots and we don't like the fact that we have to subtract here. So what we can do is we can express this thing as a fraction. I'm going to put it over 1. And we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. And remember, the conjugate of a binomial is the same expression as the original, except with the sign changed. So it's actually square root of x squared plus 2x plus x over square root of x squared plus 2x plus x. And when we multiply by the conjugate, the middle terms cancel out. That's kind of the purpose in the... Um, so the so we're, we're basically foiling these two binomials in the numerator. So the result is x squared plus 2x. Notice there's no square root symbols anymore because we multiplied those together. And then the middle terms cancel out, so we don't have to worry about that and it's minus x squared for the last term. And the denominator is 1 times this whole quantity. So it's basically just that quantity on the bottom. Square root of x squared plus 2x plus x. And all of this part is under the root. OK, and then we're able to make a simplification in the numerator because we have x squared minus x squared. So we now have 2x over that same denominator, no change, x squared plus 2x plus x, where this part's under root. OK, and now we're still sort of in a difficult position because if we were to let x go to infinity now, we would still have infinity over infinity which would be indeterminate so another technique that we can use here is we can divide every term in the numerator and the denominator by x so i know that sounds a little a little out there right but if you can if you can agree that it doesn't change the value like in the first step we multiply by the conjugate which you know if you didn't have the insight to do that that seems like it comes completely out of left field but if you just kind of suspend that that disbelief for a minute and say well it doesn't change the value of this expression if we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same exact thing so give it a try and see where it gets you well it gets you here and now we're gonna make another kind of wild proposition what if we were to divide the numerator numerator and denominator by x again to have that insight is just a matter of the experience of doing these types of problems but if you just try it and see where it gets you you may discover that it'll allow us to actually take the limit as x goes to infinity. So let's give it a try. I'm going to say divide each term by x. So I'm going to jump down here. So the numerator would become 2x over x. And the denominator is a little strange because we have this square root, which is x squared plus 2x and it's not going to be convenient for us to divide that by x so let's divide it instead by square root of x squared square root of x squared and that's the same as dividing by x because x equals the square root of x squared 
right? All right, so now let's see what comes of this. The numerator just becomes 2. The denominator, this part is going to become 1, right? So that's not too bad. And this part, why don't we write it all under one root? Because it's one big square root. So it's x squared plus 2x all over x squared. And that whole thing is plus 1. And now what happens under here? Well, that becomes, we still have the 2. And now x squared over x squared is just 1. And 2x over x squared is 2 over x. And that's all under a square root still. And it's plus 1. Now, this expression, everything we've done here has been totally legal, totally legitimate algebraic rearrangements. If we were to now let x go to infinity, I haven't been writing every time. I should have been writing limit as x goes to infinity in front of each one of these, but I haven't. But now let x up go to infinity. What's going to happen? Well, the only place x appears in this whole thing is in the denominator of this one term in the bottom. 2 over an infinitely large number, as x goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, infinity, 2 over x goes to 0, right? Any integer of an infinitely large number is going to become 0. So this part goes to 0. And now you have all numbers. So the limit equals, let's get a little arrow going down here, 2 over root 1 plus 1 which is 2 over 2. I'm running out of room. 2 over 2, which is 1. And that is the final answer.